in many diverse different members, drivers, owners, asphalt, dirt, whether it, whoever it is, whoever has been enshrined into the Hall of Fame has left their mark and their legacy in our sport. The next one is going to be only the second inductee to the Niska Hall of Fame from north of the border, joining Pete Bicknell in our Hall of Fame. The next Hall of Famer and the second Canadian, Canada Joe, Joe Plazic. <laughs> Shane Andrews is going to do the induction. I'll hand it back over to the voice. You got to watch that wire. I see that. Yeah. My bag of tricks. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. How about a round of applause for Dan Martin, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> see, we haven't started hot laps on our coloring contest. <laughs> I beg your indulgence for just a moment here. I gotta get something set up. <clears throat> it's uh, kind of cool that all these pictures are here, and I'll I'll share with you in just a moment why. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our friends from the great country of Canada that are here with us today, and the family members that came to. Uh, join and honor Joe Plazic for his induction here today. His wife Susan, his daughter Fallon, his granddaughter Octavia, and his son Jeff, we welcome you here today. Thank you for coming down. We also want to uh, welcome longtime crewman and a great friend of Joe Plazic's, Ken McAllister. So uh, thank you. Uh, how about a round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. Now I know why they started the, uh, the high bar cars and uh, modifieds. Uh, Jeffrey, what are you, 6'6"? Six, six? Uh, <laughs> eh, give or take an inch, you know. <laughs> well, we can't miss you. My gosh, man. Wow. If I was only that tall, I wouldn't be bald. <laughs> um, I want to share a little story with you here before I get started. You know, growing up in uh, central New York, we had the opportunity to go to a lot of racetracks as a family throughout the years. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit of, of a story. A very diversified household, okay, of race fans in my house. You had my brother John, who was a Bob McCready fan. You had my brother Wayne, Dave Leip fan. Myself, as everybody pretty much knows and has been documented, Jumpin' Jack Johnson fan. But there was someone in our house that uh, hold very near and dear to my heart, my mom, Barb, who took us to the races, and we would make treks all over, whether it was Fonda, Rolling Wheels, Canandaigua, the New York State Fairgrounds. It was an annual pilgrimage to go up to the fairgrounds for Fourth of July and Labor Day to watch the races. And uh, my mom always had a favorite driver, too. And today, with all these pictures up here, I think it's kind of uh, fitting that I show you this, because her favorite driver, I have the opportunity to induct into the New York State Stock Car Association Hall of Fame. And this is a picture that she's uh, had on the wall of her house for a number of years, and she let me borrow it today so I could uh, help with the induction as uh, Joe Plazic was my mom's favorite driver. So I'm just going to put this here. In the history of dirt modified racing in the Northeast, many have made an impression, but only few have left a legacy that is worthy of Hall of Fame induction. No matter how long a racing career spans, the impact the driver has is measured by stories, memories, and accolades. At their peak and in their prime, let's be honest, the Plaza Auto Recyclers race team was big time before big time was even big time. Who here remembers the first time they saw that big white tractor trailer emblazoned with the red number one and Canadian flag prominently displayed on the side pulling into a pit area? In 1993, they were the first dirt modified team to bring in a big stacker hauler on the circuit. Memories that still resonate to this day. How can you forget the number one with the Canadian flag on the side of the car? As he was simply referred to as Canada Joe, as a symbol of his patriotism to the country he loved and proudly represented. The iconic number one with Canadian flag came from the old Harley-Davidson logo with the American flag in the middle of it. 
an idea Joe had to represent his country. The rest is history. An iconic sight to all of us Dirt Big Block modified fans. Raised in Castor Center, Ontario, Canada, Joe Plazic came from a racing family. His dad, Ed, and mom, Marilyn, are what Joe calls redneck race car people, who to this day have the same passion for the sport that they had even before their son started to compete. Growing up in the salvage and car business, it only seemed natural that the desire to compete and grow successful was embedded in Joe at a young age. Joe was originally drawn to motorcycles, and that passion came from a picture of his grandfather on a Harley Davidson motorcycle while serving in the army in Europe. At the age of seven, Joe saw this, and that was his inspiration. Drawn to bikes, he developed a desire to compete in motocross. At the age of 12, Joe pestered Dave Bramwell, who was a manager at their, salv at their salvage yard so much about racing motocross, cross, that finally on a Friday afternoon, Dave said to him, have your stuff ready to go Sunday morning, and took him to Durham, Ontario. That Sunday at 6 a.m., they took off for Joe to compete in his first motocross. Joe ran his first moto and worked himself into such a frenzy that he did not race the second moto. After that first time, Joe settled in and competed in motocross from the age of 12 to 16. After many bumps, bruises, and broken wrists, and from the urging of his parents, as they did not like him racing the bikes, they decided to go auto racing. It was 1977 at the very fast asphalt track Cayuga Speedway. The previous year's champion of the compact division, Bruce Greenhall, had his car for sale. It was a gremlin that Bruce's dad, Jack, owned and was looking to sell. Joe and his dad went up to their place and looked at the car. Jack and Mr. Plazek made a deal. And Jack said, I don't know if the kid can drive. Let him try it. If he crashes it, you own it. $5,000 later, the Plazeks had a race car. Joe went out and bought a new suit, new helmet, new driving experience with no driving experience but the determination to give it a try. His first night out, he started last in his heat race, the green flies, and he passed a few cars and he got to thinking, this is easy. What is everyone talking about this being so tough? Out of turn two, Joe broke loose, spins the car out into the infield and clips one of the light stands with the back of the car and tears the rear bumper right off it. No sooner than this happened in the pits, Jack Greenhall looked at Joe's dad and spoke, you own yourself a race car now. Mr. Plazek hung his head and thought, what have I gotten myself into? For the 1977 and 78 seasons, Joe's com Joe competed in the compact division. In 1979, the track combined the compact class and super weights together. With the power and weight difference, they were not competitive. Mid-season of 79, they bought a late model, again from Jack Greenhall, and started running late models for the rest of the year. They did okay, some engine trouble, but gained a bunch of experience. At the end of the 79 season, it was decided to park the car, and that was an end to Plazic Racing Team, for now. A new decade rolled in, and Joe decided he did not want to race. He wanted to enjoy life and work in the salvage yard business, go out on the boat, hang out with friends, but like any great competitor, the desire never went away. In 1982, Gord Bradshaw, who worked for the Plazics, had a dirt car that he raced at Merrittville and Humberstone Speedways. It was an old asphalt compact that he ran in the limited sportsman class with an inline six motor. Gord wanted Joe to drive, but Joe had no interest in driving, so Gord asked Joe's father, Ed, to drive it. Ed would race and Joe went and crewed for him. His dad ran a couple of races, then one weekend, Joe's brother Frank had a softball tournament that his parents took him to, but were not going to be able to make it back in time to race the car. Mr. Plazic called Joe at the house and said, you run the car tonight, because we're not going to make it back. Joe raced it that night and told his dad he loved it, and you are not getting me out of the car. I am going to drive. Joe liked the dirt so much that in 1983, he jumped over to the Modifieds on the advice of Junior Hanley. And after a few calls to Tro Maynard Troyer, Joe picked up a new chassis. That was the chassis from the Parts Peddler Show that winter. They bought a big black engine and started to build it for the 83 season. Joe had no idea about putting a Modified together, so he went to Florida to the races at Volusia and East Bay where the Modifieds were running. He took his camera 
and he took a lot of pictures of Alan Johnson, Jack Johnson, and Merv Treichler to look at their cars and to see how they did things to build the cars. That is how he got started in Dirt Modifieds. His efforts were focused on Ransomville on Friday, Merrittville on Saturday, and Humberstone on Sunday. Joe calls this an eye-opener and tough grind for a team that never did this before. But the real eye-opener and challenge came in the late fall of 83 when the decision was made to start racing in Western and Central New York. This all came about as that year Joe and Jim Begelow, who raced against each other every week, were chasing the Rookie of the Year title. Back then, if you wanted to win Rookie of the Year, you had to run the Cam 2 Tour in the fall. The Plazics decided that they wanted to go after this. They were not really prepared, but wanted to give it a try. Labor Day, they blew a motor on the mile, changed motors, went to rolling wheels that night, finished in the top 10, closing in on Begelow and rookie points. But when they returned home, they looked at the motor and saw more damage and did not pursue the rest of the tour as Jim Begelow became Rookie of the Year. From this point on, race fans in Western and Central New York would become familiar with Joe Plazic as he built a following of fans to this day still reminisce of his talents on the local tracks. Thanks to his winning ways, professional team, and desire to have success. Super Dirt Car Series wins came at Burton, Rolling Wheels, and Canandaigua. He competed at Canandaigua, his home track, where track titles came in 96 and 97. A track title at Weedsport in 95, and the place where Joe really made his mark, the New York State Fairgrounds. On the mile, Joe captured three state Labor Day wins from 95 to 97. Two triple 20 qualifying wins and two fast time pole awards for the 358 modified race. From 1993 to 1997, Joe locked in the top seven every year during this time frame, including setting fast time and starting on the front rows in 1993 and 97. Joe reflects back, I really thought that 97 was going to be our year. Despite sitting on the front row and winning one of the triple 20s, he got into a late race jingle that essentially ended his day. Starting in 1998, Joe cut back his racing endeavors to focus on a growing family and successful business. After a limited schedule of events in 99 and 2000, Joe Plazic decided it was time to step away from big block modified racing. Joe compares racing modifies to climbing Mount Everest. Once you get to the top, where is there to go? There is no real stepping stone from the modifieds. Joe did not want to try the NASCAR deal like those before him, as they always came back to the modifieds. He did not want this to be his destiny. The carrot was not there to chase. Joe went asphalt racing in the Cast Car Super Series in 2002, becoming the series rookie of the year that season. After one season with Cast Car, he decided to call it a career. But don't think that racing has completely left him. As his son Michael is dabbling in the enduro class, where to Joe's surprise, sees that his son has some talent behind the wheel. With his wife of 39 years, Susan, they have five children, Mark, Michael, Fallon, Joel, and Jeffrey, and enjoy time with their four grandchildren. Three of his boys race motocross, following in the dad's footsteps, and all are involved in the family salvage business. Joe spends his time now with his family, riding his motorcycle, and snowmobiling in the winter. He has left an indelible mark to all of us in Big Block Modified Racing in Western Central New York with that iconic number one Plazic Auto Recyclers machine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the newest member of the New York State Stock Car Association Hall of Fame, Joe Plazic. So again, President Rick Hodge with the plaque presentation, Brian Bedell from Boomer's Performance with the Hall of Fame jacket and hat. Our fifth inductee here this afternoon into the New York State Stock Car Association, Canada Joe, Joe Plazic. And Joe, uh, as you would expect, the, profes the professionalism of my good friend, 
Shane Andrews, yeah, you don't want to let your picture, yeah, Shane won't be able to see his mom again without that either. He won't, he won't want to go in the house without that picture, I'll tell you. Uh, like I said, the professionalism of Shane, uh, kind of documenting your entire career. But one thing that comes to mind with me is the professionalism of the Plastic Racing effort. Um, like Shane said, you were big time before big time was big time. Um, I was a kid from down here on the east end of the state. We didn't get to see you much until it was time uh, when you come to Lebanon Valley for the Lebanon Valley 200, part of the Cam 2 trail back then, um, you rolled into the pits with that hauler and that big white truck and, and trailer. The iconic Canadian flag number one that anybody from that era with those memories will never forget. It was, that was big time. Um, your performance did as much as the appearance. Um, you certainly knew how to get around any racetrack. When we would make the trip out to Super Dirt Week, um, I, you could probably tell me, I don't know if Shane might have even said, but how many times uh, on Thursday you were sitting in front of the, the building as one of the quick six. Uh, the Labor Day race, the same thing. Um, you had a special epitome for the, uh, the Moody Mile. Well, I think that all started when we first went down, and uh, I mean, we weren't always good there. We were, we struggled just like everybody else does, and we were uh, a back marker, and, and uh, it just, it, it became an obsession to get faster at the Moody Mile. Um, we worked hard at it, and uh, it showed in the end. Well, certainly showed us. Uh, then making it, the Canandaigua was your home on Saturday nights. Um, today, they call it Land of Legends for a reason. Um, you raced against some of the best that there were and ever will be on the dirt circuit. Um, whether it was Barefoot Bob, whether it was the Johnson brothers, uh, that, that list went on and on. Steve Payne, um, that was a, a career move right there to make your way down there and race with those names. I'm sure a lot of, that's where a lot of that knowledge came from. Well, when I, start, when I was... Starting out in like 83, 84, I had a crew chief, Mike Hillman Sr., and uh, Mike said, if you don't run against the best guys, you're never going to become the best guy. So um, we just started, you know, we started traveling to Central New York, and, um, and we were in like a 15th place car. And, it, it, you know, then it was 10th, and then it was 8th, and, and then we were a top five car for a long time before we started winning. But once we started to win, then it, uh, we learned to win, I guess. And, Hellman went, went on to have a pretty good career, too. And his son's done pretty well, too. I think two of his sons, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, again, take us, uh, I talk about, and I, I talked to Shane earlier and referred to, I didn't realize the, the Canadian number one and going back to the Harley-Davidson number one, and that all makes sense now, and that, uh, that was pretty ingenious on your own part. But that itself, you wore that like a badge of honor. And, you know, today, Shane and myself talked about that before this, when we had our meetings to do to his speech. Uh, um, that number's iconic. It, it's, and I, I, I mean, I don't mind when, when somebody wants to use it, but uh, I like to be asked. Um, because, uh, I mean, some of the stuff that um, Stuart Friesen's done with uh, some of the numbers on his NASCAR truck is really cool. But um, I, I like to, you know, that number is kind of like a symbol now of, of, of plastic racing, right? So. Oh, indeed it is, and it's yours. <laughs> um, speaking of the pl plastic racing, your background and all, I know the, uh, the story back in the day, the plastic recyclers, uh, you guys were the first, if not the only one with the paved roads around your, your lot that, you know, some of us think about going out. Uh, I started as a street stock racer. The, the kid that goes out to, to get tie rods and spindles and comes home with more bee stings than he does parts. Um, but you guys, the professionalism is much more than your race career. Yeah, our salvage yard is, is second to none in the area. Like, da Dad was a, well, still is. He, he's uh, a stickler on tidiness. And, uh, you know, he said you can't sell it if you can't find it, right? That was his motto years ago. And um, he just, he, so that kind of just filtered over into the racing. It just had to be nice, had to be clean and uh, well kept, right? So can't sell it if you can't find it before computerized inventory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I go back to like, uh, we use Cardexes and tubs, right? Now it's all, uh, you know, my kids are now all online and doing everything, you know, they, they can sit at their desk at home and sell parts, right? So. 
I asked Mitch and I asked Dale, some of the guys that you look back and think about who you raced against, some of the hardest nose competitors. Um, you, like I just dropped a couple of names of Hall of Famers that now you're a Hall of Famer and you race against some of the best. Some of the memories? Uh, well, yeah, there's a bunch. Uh, I think the best one I got is uh, Merv Treichler. Uh, I was always a fan of Merv's when I was young. He, he raced Cuba Speedway and he, you know I, I was a fan of Merv's and then I got to race against him. And uh, I remember one night at uh, Ranceville, I beat him for, uh, I think it was, I think Alan won, but we were battling for second. I beat Murr for second. And he came over and said to me, you raced way too hard. And that was kind of neat coming from Murph Trichler, right? So <laughs> Feather in your cap right there. Well, yeah, it was kind of neat. It was, uh, yeah, but it was a true story. He came over and said, you, you, you raced way too hard. I went, I come from motocross. Like we used to run 45 minute motos, right? So that's not racing hard. And then uh, with, with the two-wheel history, they say with uh, ages bring cages and uh, on to bigger and better things. And uh, I'd like to say it worked out pretty good for you. I've got a motocrosser here, Jeffrey, and, uh, and he's uh, kind of retired because of the, the ages and cages kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Well, certainly we want to congratulate you on behalf of all of us here at the New York State Stock Car Association. And uh, you, part of a very fi special five-person group here in 2024. Congratulations and welcome to the Niska Hall of Fame. Thank you for everybody coming out on a great day. <laughs> Remind you of Syracuse, didn't it? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our fifth and final inductee to the Niska Hall of Fame here for the class of 2024. Again,